Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful Valentine's Day weekend. Um, depending on where you're joining us from, it's 10 a.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, but I, need, I know that some people are joining us from Kampala, from Accra. Good morning. Thank you for joining us so early in the day on a Monday morning. Welcome to Flutter Wave Grow My Business webinar. Um, it is a webinar workshop series that we do where we share information on how to grow your business at every stage of your business growth. And this month, we're, we're having a part two of a session that we had last month on finance and managing finance for your, for your growing business. But this time around, we're going a little bit more specific and more granular. And we are talking about key pillars for, my, for growing and managing your finance as a growing business. And um, Israel Koledo, who is the head of finance for Africa for, at Flutterwave, he's going to be taking us through. The last session was very impactful, very helpful, and we got a lot of positive feedback as a result of that session. And we had a lot of people telling us that they need a little bit more information. And so we have you know, spoken to Israel and he has been gracious to join us today to talk us through how to, the main key pillars and then how Flutterwave also helps you as a business as well. So that, you know, when it comes to managing your finances, you don't have to look in multiple places. Flutterwave will be, every pillar of finance that Israel is going to talk about, you can use Flutterwave to solve. So um, before I introduce Israel, before Israel, I give, I pass over to Israel. Um, I just want to share, you know, some, some, housekeeping rules and information. So this webinar is being recorded as every other webinar it has been recorded. Um, if you registered for this webinar and all of you who are here obviously registered, if you registered for this webinar, you would have seen that we had a little bit more, you know, questions that we wanted to answer, wanted you to answer. And then we had some consent boxes that we wanted you to tick as well. And this is because, um, Prior to this webinar, people were not aware that the webinars were, webinars were being recorded until they got on the webinar. So the reason that we ask you to take the consent box is that your information is being shared and being, being recorded, not shared, sorry. Your information is being recorded. That means the, you know, the email address you use for registration is being recorded. Um, but if you, you don't have to consent to marketing material, that marketing material uh, box was available for you to not take. However, there is no way for us to not record you if you are on the webinar, right? So if you ask a question on the webinar, there's no way for us to not record your own question. Does that make sense? So that's the reason I see a few questions. People were asking questions about why we are asking for consent um, and what information we are using and how that information is going to be stored. So that information is pretty much everything you submit on the webinar, which is just your email address, um, your industry, and the country or city that you're in, and then um, your name. But what we do with that information is if you consent to marketing materials being sent to you, which means you'll also be receiving, you know, a lot of information on webinars that we're doing, events that we're hosting, partnerships and, and, and product updates from Flutterweave as well, then we'll add you to our mailing list. But if you are not consenting to that, um, the only thing that you'll be consenting to is us um, recording this webinar so that if you ask a question on the webinar, we can use that information, um, you know, we can put that because this webinar is being recorded and we put it up on YouTube every time. So we can put it up on YouTube. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the thinking behind it. But if you have more questions, happy to answer them. So um, we have a Q&A section and we have a chat section, as you can see on your screen. Um, the Q&A section is where we're going to be answering questions, where we get to the question and answer section. Um, but you can use the chat function to chat among yourselves to, you know, just share commentary to relate to the speaker. So if you can hear me, you can use the chat function now just to let me know that you can hear me. You can give me a thumbs up emoji, anything just to let me know that I can hear you. And you can hear me just fine. Okay, I see hi. That's good. Um, so yeah, just to clarify that. Um, so we are only going to be addressing a lot of the questions that are coming up as a result of, of the topic. Th those are the questions that we'll prioritize because we want to move as quickly as possible. But if we, we may be able to get to other questions as well. However, if we don't get to your question, please don't fret. Uh, you can reach us on social media. We are the Flutterwave on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. 
um, but even on LinkedIn as well. Um, and then if you have any support issues, our support page on Twitter is FLW support on Twitter. And um, you can email us hi at flutterwavego.com as well. Um, those are the channels to reach us for any questions that you have. If you have any specific questions to issues that you're having, um, please feel free to send us an email, send us a DM on Twitter, and we will respond and address the issues. Okay, I believe that's all the information on housekeeping. I know it's a lot. Um, I will come back after Israel is done. So Israel is going to talk us through his own session. And then after Israel's session, we'll go into a little bit of information on um, what Flutterwave has in store for you as a small and growing business. And then um, we will do the question and answer session. And after the question and answer session, then we'll be done. Um, hopefully we'll do this in an hour. Um, but yeah, so hi Israel, we're ready for you. Yeah, good morning everyone. Um, thanks for joining the session again. Uh, we'll be talking about um, key pillars of financial planning. I mean, it sounds like a big word, but essentially it's, it's what, it, what it's all about is what do you need to bear in mind uh, when you are planning your business finance? You are focusing mainly on finance for the business, not personal finance in this instance. We might have another session where we'll talk about personal fi finance. Um, to reintroduce myself for those that didn't catch the introduction that Wendy did or weren't around during the last um, session that, that we had. Um, Israel Kolido, I'm the head of finance for Africa at Flutterwave. All right, so let's go straight to the point because I, I, I want this to be um, interactive as much as possible. The last session that we had, I, I think I took too much time <laughs> on the presentation. So we didn't have as much time for Q&A. But this one, I, I promise you, I'll try to, I'll try to make it shorter than, than, than the last one so that we can have more time to answer questions because we could have put to a, a lot of questions last time. Um, all right, so this is what we, we are talking about. The key things to note when you're planning your business finance. Like I said, the focus here is on growing business. Um, startups um, and, and the like. So these are the key things we'll be covering. We'll be talking briefly about what financial planning is. Uh, and then, I mean, there is, no, um, there is no generic rule about what are the three or the main things you need to know about financial planning. Maybe the first five or the first three different experts have their views on what, what, what it is. And what we've tried to do in this presentation is to um, um, pick ideas from different experts to see what are the what what are the points that resonates with each person. What are the things that it, that cuts across um, each 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 person's views, and based on what we have also seen uh, from us supporting businesses, we then narrow down to just three items. I mean, there are more than three that you need to focus on, but at least these three are very very important. Uh, again, maybe in other sessions we will be able to go over some, some other ones as well. So we're talking about how do you, what is even bookkeeping? How do you even do your bookkeeping? You know, people talk about bookkeeping a lot and not everybody knows what it's all about or how to even go about it. How do you do your bookkeeping as, as, as a business owner? And then apart from that, we also talk about the control mechanism that you need to have in place um, to ensure that your, business, your finances are uh, 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 up to date and, and they are not going against what you initially planned to do. What are the things you need to put? What are the more or less like a checklist for you to bear in mind um, every day you run your business to ensure that you don't go overboard? And then after that, we talk about looking into the future. The first two items that I mentioned, bookkeeping, control mechanism, those have to do with um, the here and now. What do you need to do now? To ensure that your finance, your business finance goes well. And then the last one about the income and expense forecast talks about the future. You know, what plans do you need to put in place uh, to ensure that no expense catches you off guard or will reduce the instance or the risk of an expense catching off, off guard? And to also plan ahead in terms of um, 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 expansion, you know, uh, business expansion. Uh, in terms of projected revenue, 
and all that. So those are the key things we would like to cover during this uh, presentation. Now, straight to what bookkeeping is. And like I said, I, I, this is this is more or less like, I want it to be more of a Q&A &A session. So I, I just have very limited points on each of those items that I talk, uh, talked about. So in terms of bookkeeping, what, what bookkeeping really is? Okay, before, before I go to bookkeeping, let me quickly talk about what financial planning is. Financial planning simply means that how do we put the affairs of our business in order from a financial perspective, from a finance perspective? What do we need to know as business owners that will ensure that we don't overspend the money that we receive that comes to the business and then we don't over expect um, revenue as well. Because sometimes we have these very lofty ideas about how the business should, should go. But by the time you break it down uh, and you write things down as well, it, it makes it clearer what to expect, what kind of income to, 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 to expect, what are the expenses that you typically incur on a monthly basis. Sometimes people don't even know that some expenses are, are recurring. You know, they just thing like, I mean, they just go with the flow without having, without having any, any support document for, uh, for the expenses, you know, you pay expenses as, as, as they come, not, not knowing that there are some of these expenses that actually occur every month, if you occur every month and you can better plan for those type of expenses. I mean, um, a large portion of the business expense should actually be recurring expenses, such that that way you have the mindset on what is your average spend in each month. I mean, there might be new expenses that will come up, uh, but they shouldn't form a large part of what you'll be paying every month. The 70 to 80% of your monthly expenses should be things that you've already planned for. And how you're going to do this very well is by having detailed bookkeeping. Now, to have proper, and, 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 to, and to talk about bookkeeping, this is just talking about keeping a record of your income and expenses. It can be simpler than that. It just means that you need to have a proper record of your income, you need to have a proper record of your expenses. And like I said in the last, in last, um, last session, it doesn't have to be very, um, very fancy or something that uh, will be prepared by the likes of the ERP system. You just need something basic on Excel. Or if you, yeah, if you are still going the traditional way, you can have it on a, a, a hard copy note, uh, note as well. But simp simply keeping a tab of your monthly inflow and I uh, sorry daily inflow and daily outflow on 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 expense on, on Excel would go a long way to ensure that we have a full view of what comes in and what goes out, and what will form the basis of what you record on Excel. It's what we call the source documents. Source documents means that anything that you use to either spend money or to receive money, you need to keep those records. Um, somebody comes to your store to come and fix something. Um, they issue you an invoice to, to, for the service that they blend out. You need to keep that. Don't just pay and, and then throw it away. You need to keep it. And I will explain in, in, in another place, in another um, slide, why it's also important, apart from for bookkeeping purpose, why it's also important for us to keep those source documents. Um, you also uh, carry out services for, for, for someone, you issue invoice to that person. Don't throw that invoice away, keep it. That invoice would serve as a, as a support for whatever it is you want to put on your Excel file for bookkeeping purpose. And if you want to then, well, if we then drill down to the Excel file itself, like I said, it's something very simple. Just make it very simple for yourself. I actually have, um, I have a, a sample that I would like to share with us. Let me just um, bring it up. Um, maybe um, I, I would seek permission from, from Wendy after the, um, after the program to share this with everyone so that we can also, we can uh, tweak this to fit our, our business. Um, let me do a new share so you can see what I'm talking about. 
Okay, sure. I'm not sure if, can you guys see the Excel file that I'm sharing? Yes, we can. All right, so this is, this is a simple income and expense statement. It doesn't have to be fancier than this. Just like, and, and like I said, there may be a need for you to tweak what I'm showing you, depending on the type of business that you, that you carry out. And this, this, this has assumed a, a, a yearly account. You can make yours weekly or daily. So column C that we have here, column C can be uh, February 15, column D can be February 16, and then you can then have a column that then sums each month's report up like that. So in, initially you can, you can uh, for uh, row seven, you can then have, uh, you can go to the specific of what you do. If you are a service provider, you can write the type of service that you're providing there. Uh, if you are into procurement, you can also write the kind of goods that you supply people there as well. You can say inflow from X, Y, Z, you know, put it there, any, any line of income that you have, state it there clearly, and then you put the amount here. The amount comes, comes here. And what we, again, what would inform what you have here would be those source documents that we talked about earlier. The invoices that you that you raise to people, and if you're not in the habit of raising invoices yet, I mean, it, this is 2021. We need to start raising invoices. It doesn't matter how much you are receiving. We need to be in the habit of raising invoices, and I will explain why it's it's important. See, when when we raise invoices for services that that we render, it it gives us a professional look. It's not just enough to finish working for someone and then send them your bank details on, on WhatsApp. You know, that is not that is not ideal. If you want to, if you are if you are thinking about growing our business and becoming like the big multinationals, this is what they do. They raise invoices and it has that personal look to it. Uh, apart from that, um, tax has become a very important part of um, our daily living. You know, because of the pandemic last year, um, the government couldn't raise as much revenue as they thought they would raise. So this year, there's a lot of focus on, on taxation. And when, when the tax man comes knocking on your door, the only way you can prove that this is how much income you've made is through these invoices. You don't want to get a position where you then have to share your bank statement with them. Because there may be other expenses there or other influence there that, they, that don't relate to your business, that then warrant you having to explain over and over what, what those income uh, stand for. You know, to avoid all those long stories, it's 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 better an idea for, for us to have a file where we keep all the invoices that we raise when we when we render service to people or we supply goods to people. It's very very good, and we should try to read up. Or maybe um, in another session we'll talk about taxation so that you, because it's not just for you to raise invoice there are some tax ed, um, elements that should be in that invoice that, that you are raising to be sure that to ensure that when the tax man comes calling we are we are, we are we are in a good place so this revenue apportion talks about the income we make you anything that has to do with the business we need to put it down there and you can add more Columns, more more rows to it as well, depending on the kind of income, the number of income stream that, that, that you have. Now we come to expenses. This this part would really help, um, help us to know exactly what we are spending money on. Now again, this is a template. We need to tweak this. If we are if we are paying, uh, but I, I I'm sure regardless of the kind of business that we do. There are some of the items here that would uh, cut across. So things like rent, for instance, except you are doing a business from our home. And even if you are doing business from your home and you are paying the rent, you need to apportion some of that rent to your business. Ideally, you should have an office space that you are doing business from uh, and that rental value will come here. If you are keeping this stuff on a daily basis, you can divide the annual rent by the number of days in the year, and then put each one here. If let's, for instance, let's say your uh, annual rent 
with a million naira, for instance. We can put a million naira here and then divide it by maybe 365. So this serves as your daily rent, rental value. You know, the next thing that will cut across everybody will be wages. If you if you can recall, in my last session, we talked about putting ourselves on salary. You can't, you can't be, I mean, you shouldn't be able to dip your hand into the funds of the business anyhow. Let us put ourselves on salary. Look at your by the time I, I, I will explain that the way we can come about that salary figure for, for ourselves is to look at our monthly spend. What do we need for our monthly upkeep as a person, separate from the business now? Those basic essential things alone, that is what would we'll put as wages here. And also if you have um, office, um, if, if you have store uh, staff or store assistant or uh, any type of staff that assist us to run our business, the salary also come here as well. You need to put something there as well. And, and of course, for you to run your business and to either to sell or to render services to people, there will be, um, well, there will be travels or delivery costs. So there is travel here, in case you need to travel out of your base station to render the service, or you come to delivery costs, delivery expense, if you are to go deliver your goods. So, some people have, rent, have ordered some items from you. The cost, the bike man or the cab that will take that, um, that particular product to the customer, you need to put the cost of that bike man here. The, the, if you are looking at the cost of your good, it is not just the cost of the item itself. It is not just the cost of the service itself. Any cost that is associated to you being able to deliver that good or that service to the end user forms part of the cost of the goods. So if you go to, if you, for instance, somebody needs your service and you have to take a cab there, that cab fare has to come in. So this is, these are template expenses that we need to be keeping either on a monthly basis, we can decide to keep it on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, whichever works for us. Once you've done summed up all your, so let, let me just put, uh, for the sake of um, of this presentation, let me put 10,000 error here as our expense, as our income. And then let's say we also have wages of 3,000. We have delivery of less than 1,000. At the end of the day, we see that this column here sums up all the different types of income that we have for that day or for that month. And then this then sums up all the expenses that we have for that day or for the month. Then this here then helps us to have a clear view of what the income for that day is or what the loss for that day is. See, as, as basic as this, as this exercise is, it is good for us to, I mean, we, we need to we need to clearly do this and, and, and make it an habit because that is the only way we'll be able to really track what what expenses we we, we incur and what our profit is. From that profit, uh, from, from that profit, we can then determine what we want to do. We cannot spend beyond if at all we want to spend on anything. We can't spend beyond that profit. That will help us put, uh, put the tap on, on what we do. All right. So, I mean, I, I just wanted us to go through this for us to have an idea of what an income and expense statement looks like. Again, it's nothing fancy, just something that shows what we, uh, our, our income and our, and our expenses. Now, back to uh, the presentation. Now, I know I spent a lot of time on, on, on that, but I felt that was very important for us to um, have a look. Um, as the source documents, we don't need to record financial transactions. We've gone through that. Um, we've, we, we've gone through that in, in, on the Excel file, recording the financial transactions, both inflow and outflow have to be recorded either on a daily basis, weekly, or monthly basis. 
And then another thing we also need to do is for, for, for those of us that use uh, maybe check, check, check book a lot, we need to be able to reconcile uh, bank statements on a monthly basis. We need to be able to reconcile our bank statements with what we keep in that Excel file that I, that I showed. Because that way, we'll be able to, I mean, sometimes the bank might have included some charges. So for instance, at the minimum, the bank will charge you for SMS in a month. The bank will charge you for uh, IPO process transactions in a month. Those two charges may not necessarily come into that Excel file that I showed. You then need to be able to put that, just put them from the bank statement and put them on that Excel file. So you can have a very holistic view of your total expense. You know, uh, that is very important. And then at the end of the month, we need to be able to close our books as well. By closing our books, it means that sum up all the inflow for the month, sum up all the expenses for the month, and then you have a good sense of what the monthly in, monthly profit is. And like I said, as much as possible, please, we need to we need to ensure that. A large portion, I mean, I, we discussed this during our last session. A large portion of that profit should go back into that business. At least for the first five years, it is good to reinvest into the business as much as possible because experts will tell us that it takes an average business five years to get to a break even point. Break even point means that a point where on a steady basis, your income matches your expenses. It takes average five years. Again, there are businesses that, that are well better positioned to break even faster. But ideally, an average business takes five years to break even. So that means that for the first five years, we need to be able to invest as much profit into that business as possible, which is why I said it is important for us to put ourselves on salary. It is only basic expenses that we need to spend on ourselves that we need to spend money spend money on. Other good to have items, we need to find a way to cut those ones. So essentially that's all, that's what I think we need to know about bookkeeping. Um, it is very important to be able to, to make this a habit, you know. I know because it might be new to us, it is good, it, it, it might take a while for us to get used to that. So you don't beat yourself down if you, for, if you forget to do it for, for a day or for two days. But remember to go back to it and track. Again, look, look back to your source documents. The invoices that we've raised, the invoices that, that we've received, the checks that we've, that we've, the checks that we've issued to people, the, the bills that we've received from, from, from different people, you know, receipts that we got for purchases, all these things are source documents that we, can, that we will need to use to put items on that Excel file that I showed us. Um, so that, that's it for bookkeeping. And then we we'll come to control mechanism. Now, when it comes to control mechanism, what we are talking about here is what are the checks and, checks and balances that we can put in place to ensure that we, we don't over... You see that, that, that profit line that shows on the Excel file? It is control mechanism that will ensure that we don't spend that profit for frivolous items. It is control mechanism that will ensure that all those expenses that are put in there, they actually relate to the business and not personal expenses. Whatever personal expenses that we have should be taken care of from the wages that we, that from the salary that we put ourselves on, you know? And that salary becomes the, a part of the expense for the business as well. So what is control? Control is just um, um, safeguard measures that we, that we put in place to ensure that the business continues to stay healthy or from a financial perspective. It helps us to, to it, 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 it helps us to know that, to know when we are going overboard on, on, on spending or when we are not receiving as much uh, inflow as we ought to. Sometimes we know a part of doing business is, is the fact that some customers may not be able, may, may not be able to pay us upfront, you know, for some of the 
for, for the services that we render for the goods that, that we've sold to them. Some, some customer will say, uh, please wait till month end when I get paid my salary. We need to have some control mechanism in place. Number one, to track those invoices that you've raised that have not been paid. And we can do that again on that on we can use Excel file or a Word document to track that as well. We need to first list all the people that we've sold to. So you can have like a, a like an Excel file that states the that that that, that catalogs all the invoices that you that you've raised. And then you can then have a column in front of it that talks about the payment status. And then the next column can then be for date um, the invoice was, was, was paid, you know? So one column will be for the date the invoice was issued. One column will be for the person that the invoice was issued on and their contact details, if possible. The next column will, co will, will cover the payment status, whether that has been paid or not. And then the next column will be for the date that the payment was made. This way, clearly, without argument with, with anybody, we already have a record of who, 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 who owes us, who hasn't paid our invoices. And by the time you then keep these tabs here, by the time we keep it for some weeks or for some months, it will be clear to us which type of customers we need to run away from. Because there are some customers we need to run away from. So be, if, if our business is to succeed. Because some people just want to collect goods and they don't want to pay for it. They will come up with all sorts of reasons why those, um, why, why, why they've not been able to pay, you know? So it is these control measures that would help us to, to track those type of customers that don't pay on time. And we can then um, have, uh, have um, come up with a way to aggressively follow up on them for payment or to stop delivering goods to, to them or to repay the, the uh, arrears that they owe us. Keeping that kind of um, Excel file also helps us to note the type of expenses that we occur every month so that we can properly plan for that as well. And um, basically, we, we, we also need to uh, note that when we, when we talk about control, control mechanism, it takes the conscious efforts of the, it's it, it not automatic. I mean, for big enterprises, they've developed they would have developed their system in such a way that it has become second nature to them and their automated system that ensures these checks are in place. But for growing business like ours, we need to take conscious efforts to ensure that these controls are in place. Another control that we need to have as well has to do with, um, has to do with uh, um, salaries for Salaries for ourselves. I mean, you you will see that I'm 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 hammering on this point a lot because from my experience, not being able to separate ourselves from the business is the biggest challenge that startup businesses have, growing businesses. Apart from apart from having access to finance, the next big issue that green businesses have is not being able to separate themselves from the business. And this way, what I mean by this is that if you, if you are not in the habit of putting yourself on salary or monitoring how much you are spending the business money for your personal expenses, if you are not able to keep a check on that, there is high likelihood that you'll be running the, the business at the loss. And again, if you have a tab, if, if, you've, if, you, if you've been able to come up with a list of your monthly expenses and you're able to keep yourself on that salary, if you are then spending above that amount, this country mechanism will serve as a pointer to you to say that if let's say you put on yourself on a salary of let's say 100,000 Naira per month or 150,000 Naira per month, by the time you are approaching that 150 and you are documenting all your, all your personal expenses, you will know when you should stop touching the business money. That would really help us a lot. The last item I want to talk about here is budget, uh, budgetary controls, which essentially talks about having a plan. I mean, it throws into the next item we would talk about, but what budgetary control means is that 
as, as, as a business. No expense should, meet, should catch us off guard. We should have like that simple Excel file that I showed, we should have one that is forward looking. It's one that projects into the future. So the one that we both walked through, that one talks about it now, the, the, the expenses we've incurred now, the income that we've made now. But I, we should keep that, we should also prepare something like that for future as well. So we can say that in the next six months, for instance, based on the way our business is going, this is the amount of revenue that we expect to make. This is the amount of expenses that we expect to spend on. And that then helps you to manage whatever comes in the future. So what, if, if, if a new expense comes in the future that you've not planned for, you can fall back to that budget that you've prepared to say, did I budget for this? If you budgeted for it, you can then check the, the amount, the amount you are going to spend now. Is it what you planned for? If it's a totally new expense, we would have to sit down and ask ourselves very hard questions. Do we need to spend on this expense? Because what that then does is if you introduce a new expense line into that budget, it reduces whatever profits that we've uh, thought that we will make at the end of the period. This is the last uh, main point that, that I would talk about. Sorry, this is the last point I would talk about. And again, it flows from what I said last time about having a project in place. Um, as a very good business owner, we need to be able to plan into the future. And the easiest way to plan into the future is by writing things down. It makes, it makes the vision clear to everyone when we, write, when we write it down. We can use that Excel template that I shared again as well to write down in the next six months, these are the inflow that we expect. In the next six months, these are the expenses that we, that we plan to, to spend on. And that helps us, that keeps us in check. It helps us to be able to um, identify expenses that are new, that will require us to sit back and think through, do we need to spend on this, on this item? It also helps us to, to know when we are going overboard on some type of expense, because each expense would have been put down and an amount put in front of that expense. By the time we are overshooting that amount that we put for that expense, we know that we need to reevaluate that spend again. Now, having done all this, like I said, it's it, it's 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 not um, it may not come easy the first few months that we try to do it, but by the time we practice over and over, we would realize that um, it, 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 it's easier done than than it looks. You know, it's it, it's something that we can do easily, and up, over time it, it becomes second nature. But like I said. We have to take conscious efforts to, to, to do this, um, to do this uh, bookkeeping and the forecasting and the control mechanism. We need to have conscious, we need to make conscious efforts and, um, and, and, and stick to it. One of the points that we discussed during our last session was the fact that we need to be stingy, you know, and it might sound very, very uh, odd, but the truth is, as business owners, we need to be. Uh, we need to be stingy on ourselves. We need to be stingy. Uh, people need to call us stingy because that's the only time you can put back a lot of your profits into the business. You know, um, so we shouldn't, that, that shouldn't deter us from, because we already have a goal in mind. The, the income statement forecast that we prepared, the, the budget that we prepared will serve as a guide for us such that whatever people say about our business or whatever comes, we are able to come back to that budget and check on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, if you are running the business in line with what we've, we've planned. Um, I mean, those, those are the few points that, that I feel we need to touch on again this morning. Um, it, like I said earlier, consistency is very key. We need to be consistent in carrying out this, in, in, in keeping those sorts of documents. We need to be consistent in journaling, in, in, in writing down the expenses that, 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 that you are paying for. 
you know, writing down the income that you've made, in you know, writing down the people that we've sold good, goods to or rental services to that haven't paid us. We need to be able to consistently do that. And over time, we'll see that planning for our, planning the finance of our, of our business is very, very easy to do. Um, thank you very much for your time. Um, I think we can go to the Q&A now. Um, Wendy. Thank you so much, Israel. That was really, 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 really insightful. I feel like even I learned some stuff. So we have two questions from on the topic, and then we have two additional questions. So I'm going to go into the first question. Um, are there any resources, books or digital materials uh, you would recommend business owners and entrepreneurs study to have a better understanding of how to manage business finance? Did you hear that? I, I didn't realize that I was on mute. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, there, there, are, there are materials online. I mean, thank God for the internet, for technology. There, there are millions of materials out there that we can use to better understand as a growing business, what are the things we should pay attention to? I mean, a simple search on, 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 on Google, for instance, would, 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 would bring up um, different materials that, 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 that we can study, you know. And we also see templates of different things. If we want to prepare a budget, for instance, let's Google budget template, for instance. You will see all sorts of templates come up for you to adapt to your, to your business. One of the ones that I, the one that I shared actually is also a template developed by someone as well, you know. But we can then, um, we can then adapt it to fit into what we do. So I would recommend that you we go online, search for materials that talk about how to manage business as a growing, how to manage finance in a growing business. Some of the ideas, I, I, I must warn you though, some of the ideas might be a bit foreign uh, because most of those documents relate to uh, more developed countries. But I'm very certain that, that one or two points that we can pick there that will be able to help us. In our, in, our, in our businesses. Yeah, thanks, Wendy. Thank you, Israel. The second question is, how do you keep up to date with modern practices for managing business finance? Are modern practices necessary at all? If yes, why? All right. Um, I, I don't know what the main, <laughs> what this person means by modern practices because the, the art of bookkeeping has been, has been on for centuries, you know. Um, I would say this though, that it is very important for us to keep, at least the ones that we've shared with ourselves this morning, it is very important for us to keep to that. Again, if we think back to the fact that we want our business to grow and become like a multinationals, like the big names that we hear today, you know, if we really want to do that, those businesses didn't get there um, by, by wishful thinking. We got there by consistent practice of financial, consistent financial planning practices, you know. And one of those, those key, key practices is documenting our expenses, documenting our, our income. That is very important. Um, again, I, I don't know exactly what we mean by modern practices, but what comes to mind really is what I've explained this, this morning. Uh, keeping proper book, bookkeeping, um, keeping proper, uh, keeping our, our source documents in the place where we can easily refer to them. Um, having great control mechanism in place to ensure that we don't just dip our hands into the business funds anyhow. Uh, everything is properly budgeted for and having a, at least a six month budget in place uh, to guide what, what we do. Yeah. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you, Israel. Um, okay, next question is talking about the cost of services provided. How about for businesses that price their goods excluding delivery? Hmm. I would say, except, except your customer is the one paying, if your, if your customer is the one paying for the delivery directly, then that is, you don't have much to worry about. But if, if the customer expects to just receive the goods, 
uh, then you need to factor the cost of the goods into the cost of delivering the goods into your the cost of that good itself. Because you, you won't be able to get a full view of what it costs you to get that good or, or to get that, that services down to the customer. I mean, you don't need to, in your, in your invoice to, to, to the customer, you don't need to put another, if, if you know that it's a customer that really kicks against um, delivery cost, find a way to include that into the cost of your service itself. So if the cost of your service, for instance, is 100,000, then you can, and the, and the cost of delivery is maybe 5,000. You can make your cost of service 105. You know, but it is very important if the customer is not paying directly for delivery, you as the one delivering the goods or the, the, delivering the service, you have to include that into the cost. That way, you, are, you, 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 you know that you've included all everything that it costs you to deliver, to make, to, 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 to get the goods or the service down to the uh, customer. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you, Israel. So the, um, we have two additional questions, but not related to the topic. Uh, what are the future plans on allowing South African merchants to transact on airtime and DSTV, Netflix, and other subscription services? Um, I'm not sure that I understand. It. So in terms of airtime and DSTV, I know that that's not yet available on the dashboard. Um, but in terms of Netflix and other subscription services, those are available currently through virtual cards. Um, we don't have a direct Netflix subscription on the on the dashboard, um, but you know we have virtual cards on Flutterwave for business. You can use that to make a payment for your Netflix and subscription services. Just create a card, fund it, and then use it from your dashboard. Um, this is something that you can also do if you are a Butter user. Butter by Flutterwave is our retail product. So if you want to receive to make subscription payments and you want to use a virtual dollar card, that can be done through Flutterwave for Business or on your Butter um, account. Uh, the second question is, since Flutterwave offers an easy to use invoice model to create invoices, would you look at expanding it to include other accounting features such as uh, petty cash control or credit notes and vouchers clients can use in my Flutterwave store? So this is great feedback. Um, this will be shared with the product team um, so that they can let us know if this is within the pipeline for our product um, improvements for the businesses. But it's great feedback. Thank you, Jacques. Jack, I think that's how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I have butchered your name. Um, the next question for you, Israel, I believe this is the final question is, what's the advice of, for those of us who have some capability deploying and using open source ERP? Would it be recommended for them to use, recommended to use them from the get go of the business? Perfect. I mean, I would totally, totally recommend it. Um, if we lay a very good foundation for, for, for our business, <clears throat> by the time our business grows and becomes very big, it is easier to manage that way. Foundation always matters. And if you are, if you are uh, tech savvy enough to use an ERP, all the supposed us because there are, there are some free um, ERP systems that you can actually use. If you're able to navigate your way around it, I would totally recommend it. Totally recommend it. It's 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 it will be like a version of the Excel file that I showed us, but just that um, they would have added some other features to it as well. So if you can navigate your way around it, it is totally recommended. Um, you just need to be sure that you also have backup for whatever it is. Uh, periodically pull reports from that um, open from that ERP system and have it stored on either your flash drive or, or your laptop. But sometimes. Those ERP systems also have down, down, downtime, and you don't want that downtime to affect your business. Even for businesses like Flutterwave as well, uh, that use ERP system, we will periodically um, back up whatever it is we are putting on the ERP system on our, on our system, on our files. Um, if, if anything happens to the ERP system, you have something to fall back to. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you, Israel, for this session. Uh, yeah. Have a great week.